What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and properly, properly episode one of testing a bunch of new cars to replace the Audi A1. And this is where it all began at Watford Audi where Sanj, head salesman here, sold me uh, the Audi A1 and then I took it back to him six hours later all blacked out and he totally fell in love with it and I've known Sanj for many many years and today he has sorted me out with probably the first realistic replacement to the Audi A1 and it is a brand new 2016 Audi S3. First things first, as you can notice, this is the four-door version of the S3. It also comes in a two-door, exactly the same as the A1. It is gonna be a really interesting prospect to drive a car, considering for a daily, that has four doors. Is that something that I will be looking for? The Porsche certainly did not have four doors. Uh, it's also got a very nice sunroof, which is currently open at the moment, so fingers crossed we can really get to grips with this car. The steering wheel I absolutely love, and we've got the virtual cockpit as well. So the RS3, the new facelifted RS3, will have the virtual cockpit as well, which has just gone off, but that is the steering wheel. Inside the Audi S3, um, it's very similar controls to every single other Audi that is in the range because they are uniform. The seats are really nice, we've got the quilted sport seats here, um, and to move off, it's very easy to do. One thing that I said in the Porsche, pretty much right from the word go, as I was discovering all of the controls, everything that was in the Porsche, I was learning on camera. This, however, just feels very familiar. And of course, to a lot of people, that is something that is comfortable when, when buying a new car. They want something that they're used to, something that they're not gonna have to press all of the buttons to work out what things do. Whereas I think I'm completely the opposite. I'm considering stepping away from a brand or a manufacturer that I know, like Audi and Mercedes, and going for something completely different that I'm not that familiar with, so that it's a real learning curve. And uh, I need to turn start stop off because I don't like it. Back on. I just don't like the lurch of Inside the car, it already feels so much more spacious than my A1. If I was to compare the A3 and the A1, you kind of look at them and go, okay, they're quite similar, but actually being in this car and looking at those back seats compared to my A1, they are vastly, vastly bigger. So that's something that I'm definitely looking for. In a daily, it's more about practicality than it is anything else. So I think with back seats like as big as that, transporting I'd say fully grown adults around um, you need some big seats in the back this is definitely a lot punchier than my a1 this is about 40% throttle a lovely far from the upshift exhaust and uh, I'm in manual, I'm in manual. I have no idea what sort of drive select we are using at the moment, I can imagine. Oh, we're in dynamic, excellent. Let's go into manual. And let's find out the capabilities of the facelifted S3. Ready? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this, this is quick. <laughs> Very quick. That was a first sort of full throttle acceleration. Not entirely sure at what revs I changed gear, but wow. For a, a large hatchback, I'd say this is a large hatchback. We'll call the A1 a small hatchback or a city car. This is really, really fast. Um, actually, I'm gonna go around this roundabout. Here we go, Quattro. Grippy and not much understeer. <laughs> not much understeer at all. <laughs> and power wise, this is definitely all the power you need in the daily. <laughs> oh my god. Performance on this car is, is definitely impressive. 
okay, I've kind of realized I was getting a, a bit ahead of myself and doing a, <laughs> doing a test on its performance capabilities uh, whilst trying to talk about what it's like as a daily. However, now I have put the car in comfort mode using the drive select. I've got comfort, auto, dynamic, individual, efficiency, oh efficiency, I had that in my A1 as well, but in the A1 I had efficiency, auto and dynamic, so the drive select has obviously become a lot more intelligent in these cars, and I'm driving around in comfort mode now, obviously that softens the suspension a little bit, lightens up the steering, I assume the valves on the exhaust system aren't as prominent as they have been, turn that off, very well specced, quite relaxing, the seats are nice, powerful, space. If I was to consider the facelifted RS3, so brand new RS3, top of the range, upgraded power, upgraded performance, upgraded technology, and of course facelifted, um, you are going to be looking at a March, April, May delivery. So you cannot get a new facelifted RS3 for quite some time. So if we're talking about the entire A3 family, in a weird way, the S3 I think is inching ahead against the RS3, purely because the facelifted RS3 isn't available until Q1 and Q2 of next year. And of course the used one, well in six months time is gonna be the old one, Let's summarise the Audi S3 as a contender to replace the A1. Is it exciting enough to replace the Audi A1? I would probably say no, because it's the natural progression from an A1. I want to, I don't know, like I, I want something that will excite me. Let's put it back into auto. Fundamentally, as a car, this is near enough. I, I'm going to say it, even though I've just said that it, this isn't the right car for me to replace the A1 with, but it's almost the perfect daily. It is almost the perfect daily. It's just because if I was moving from an A-Class Mercedes or if I was moving from a 1 Series BMW, this would definitely be up there as one of the cars that I would want to change to because the technology, the way this car is built, how this car performs, how this car handles, and how it sounds, it's wicked. It is really, really good fun. I'm actually gonna, come on. I wanna put it back into comfort mode. It is tons and tons of fun, loads of space, a lot of power. So if you wanted to ferry your friends around, but still put your foot down and, and be one of the quickest cars on the road, of course, with a remap and exhaust system, which I do love to do, uh, it would sound awesome. It would sound really, really cool. First test done. I think this is a wicked car, but would I change the A1 for it? I think not. This is logical. This is an obvious upgrade from the A1, but I think it's a no. So make sure that you tune in for the next episode of uh, there's no real name for this series. But anyway, the next car that I'm going to test to be the replacement to the Audi A1 is coming very soon. So make sure that you give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And put your suggestions or your comments or your opinions on the S3 in the comment box below. I look forward to checking them all out, seeing if you've got any other suggestions on what cars you want to see me test next. But as the S3 goes, the 2016 facelifted Audi S3, we're finished. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys. This button, I was told about this button, I've just pressed it and it's an experience. So I wanted to put it on camera that this button is called Sports Response and is in the same sort of league as NOS. This button here gives you a 20 second boost of all of the performance and turbo power that you can have on a car, it gives you 20 seconds of it for you to hoon. Ready? I'm gonna press this button now and you'll hear the car.